Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an adventure, comedy, family film from 2013, titled Jack the Giant Slayer. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Once upon a time, a little boy named Jack lived with his father. The boy enjoyed reading the tale of the giants, which his mother used to tell him before she died. The story is as follows, a long time ago, the monks found magic beans that they hoped would grow a pathway to God. Unfortunately, when they came up the stalk they found something else standing between heaven and earth. The place was Gantua, the home of the fierce giants. The giants came down to earth, stealing and pillaging the human race, but also acquiring a taste for human flesh. The same story is quite enjoyed by Isabel as well, the little princess. Her mother reads it to her and asks if she's not afraid of the giant's leader with two heads. The girl says no, so the mother continues. The monks had returned to the dark arts to find a way to rule the giants. They crafted a crown from their melted hearts. King Eric enslaved the giants with the crown and sent them back to Gantua, making it their prison. He severed the stalk and peace returned to his land. Some relics remain from that time that were buried with the king and the story became a legend. As Jack's father tucks him in bed, the boy asks if the giants will return. He tells him that the king's guardians, born of noble blood, will cut them down. The father tells him that the giants aren't real. Isabel's mother tells the girl that King Eric was real in a way. She's of his blood. When the girl says that she's seen his grave in the catacombs, her mother realizes that she's been roaming around the castle. But, she's not upset because she wants her to know about the world if she is to become queen one day and has the power to make the world a better place. Once Jack's father leaves his room the boy continues to read the story, which says that the giants will return to wage a war with the earth and kill the last of Eric's kin. Ten years later, Jack's uncle sends him off to sell the horse in the city, telling him not to get distracted. Once in town, Jack, now fully grown, tries to sell his horse and cart. He immediately gets distracted by the town theater. They retell the story of King Eric and the giants. Jack sees a beautiful girl in the audience and she notices him staring at her. Before the play ends, three men begin to harass the girl, so Jack decides to step in when they follow her out. He gets punched in the face, then pleads with the men to let the girl go. Suddenly, a royal guardian appears behind him. The men apologize to the guardian because they don't want trouble and when they see Princess Isabel climb on one of the horses, they drop to their knees, to the bewilderment of Jack. He turns around and then the guardian tells him to kneel as well. Outside of the theater, he realizes that someone had stolen his car. Meanwhile, Roderick and Wick talk about his future marriage with the princess. They run into a monk and let him pass. Once they get inside the room where the relics are kept, Roderick quickly goes to check if they're in their place. The magic beans have been stolen, but King Eric's crown remains there. He orders Wick to close the gates of the city and find the monk. The monk realizes that they are searching for him when Jack shows up selling his horse. He offers the boy 10 coppers for the horse and Jack would gladly agree if the monk had the money with him. Because of that, the monk offers him the beans as collateral. Jack isn't impressed, so he tells him that they are holy relics, which he could return to the abbey in exchange for the money promised to him. The monk tells him not to lose the beans or get them wet. While Jack is still considering the offer, the monk has already taken the horse and is leaving the city. Before he can escape, Wick sends his men on him. They chase him down and grab him. Later, Isabel gets back to the castle, apologizing to Elmont, her guardian, for making his job so hard. Simultaneously, Jack's uncle is scolding him for exchanging the horse for the beans. He tells him that he has to grow up because he's 18 years old. The king scolds the princess at the same time about running away from the palace without the guardians because she's the future queen. She asks why he would ask her to marry someone twice her age and who she doesn't love, like Roderick. Isabel tells her father that she's not a fragile and helpless creature and he tells her she's like her mother. Jack's uncle is mad and he flings the beans of the table, saying he'll have to sell the remaining possessions of Jack's parents. He begs him no to do that, but the man doesn't let go. Isabel begs her father to let her be free to roam the kingdom, but he tells her that he doesn't want to lose her like her mother. Even though she makes her case in front of the king, he sets his final word that she will marry Roderick and stay in the palace. Isabel leaves disappointed, but, that night she defies her father again. Simultaneously, Wick and Roderick are interrogating the monk. He says that they should have left the beans where they were buried because they were made from dark magic. The beans can't be controlled. Roderick kills him. Later, Jack is worried about his uncle being out in the storm. At the same time, the princess is lost when she sees the lights on Jack's house and follows them. As Jack is getting ready to go out and look for his uncle, the princess knocks on his door. He invites her inside and they chat, as the ground below the house fills with water, getting closer to a magic bean. Jack and Isabel talk about books and adventures. He tells her that he got into a fight in the princess's honor at the market, both pretending that they don't recognize each other. Jack asks her what she's running away from. She says that she's just looking for an adventure and Jack kneels, making it known that he's aware of who she is. Isabel tells him to stand, then thanks him for defending her honor. The bean begins the sprout under the house, but two of them are still unaware. He gives her his favorite book about the giants and tells her that he hopes she'll find what she's looking for. 
Suddenly, the house begins to shake and a giant stem rips the floors open, as it rises to the sky. Jack is thrown outside and Isabel is trapped into the farmhouse. It gets picked up by the rising beanstalk and Jack jumps to it so he can help Isabel. The house keeps getting elevated higher and higher when Jack finally gets back to the house and tries to come inside. Isabel opens the door, nearly pushing him off. He grabs her hand but still falls down the beanstalk, taking her mother's bracelet with him. Jack manages to arrive safely back down at the foot of the stalk but passes out. The following morning, the king wakes him up and asks him why he has his daughter's bracelet. Jack gets recognized by Elmont from the market and is allowed to explain what happened. Both him and Roderick will help the guardians find and rescue Isabel. Later, the men are making their way up the stock. Roderick is clearly up to something. Jack asks Elmont what he thinks is up there, but the guardian doesn't believe in giants. He tells the boy that he shouldn't be doing this to impress the princess because even if she didn't marry Roderick, she could never marry a commoner like him. Kra, the other guardian, helps Jack get to the other side of the stock, but the boy unfortunately falls. They save him and keep climbing the massive beanstalk, losing people on the way at the behest of Roderick and unbeknownst to Elmont. Only six of them remain. The next day, they awake to realize that they have reached the top of the beanstalk. Since the princess isn't in Jack's house, they enter the world of the giants searching for her. As the guardians begin the pursuit, Roderick stops Jack and threatens him for the rest of the magic beans. He gives them the purse and is threatened not to say a word. Jack keeps one of the beans and puts it in his locket. Elmont and Craw find a clue that Isabel has left to find her way back. Craw and the others follow Isabel's marks when suddenly Jack finds the book that he gave her, saying to the rest that she must have hidden there. They see some broken branches and Jack supposes that something big pulled her out of her hiding place and that she must be in trouble. Elmont orders the men to split up into two groups. He, Fra, and Jack find some sheep and try to catch one when they set off a trap. Elmont begins to cut them out when he notices something approaching. Once they are out, they hide from that which approaches, a giant. It eats a sheep hole then catches Kra's scent and finds him. The man runs, but the giant gets to him in a few leaps. As it's getting prepared to eat Kra, Elmont runs up to him and stabs him, just to get knocked out. The giant grabs them both and takes them away. Jack follows it. Meanwhile, the other group gets to a waterfall, so the guardian tells Roderick to sit and rest while he finds another way around. They trick him and push him off the cliff. Suddenly, a giant grabs Wick and eats him. Another giant appears, but Roderick gets to the crown in time and manages to save himself. Jack has followed the giant into one of their cities. Simultaneously, Isabel is being kept prisoner by a giant, who questions her about how she got there. She won't answer. When it asks her about others coming for her, she says that she's alone. But the two-headed giant, General Fallon knows that Isabel is a descendant from King Eric. He shows her around to his men, saying that the humans have returned. Suddenly, the other giant brings Craw and Elmont there as well. The leader of the giants questions the two of them and when Craw antagonizes him, it eats him. Jack follows the commotion in the giant city but has to hide from two giants before he gets there. The general threatens Elmont that he'll eat Isabel if he doesn't answer his questions and argues with another giant over the right to do that when Roderick suddenly shows up wearing the crown. All the giants kneel to him, even the general. Elmont is happy when he shows up, but Roderick just takes the throne. To both his and Isabel's surprise, Roderick orders the giants to fight for him as their king and take over the earth as his army. He tells them to prepare for battle at dawn. General Fallon doesn't like that. Meanwhile, Jack finds the room with all the loot the giants have stolen. Then takes a look at the city and hears Isabel beg for her life as she's being taken away. She and Elmont are being prepared to be eaten. Jack arrives to save them while the giant cook looks for something. He can't get Isabel out, so he goes over to Elmont and gives him a knife. The giant comes back, almost killing Elmont with a giant pick, then puts him in the oven. Before he gets cooked, Jack climbs over to get him, while he lets himself out of the dough. Suddenly, the giant pulls Isabel out of the cage and gets ready to chop her up, when Jack takes one of the cooking knives and stabs him with it. Elmont releases himself and Isabel hides, as Jack remains dangling on the giant's back. It hits itself in the wall, effectively finishing the job. Elmont is impressed that Jack killed a giant, then Jack tells them that he knows a way out. Meanwhile, at the foot of the stalk, the king asks one of his generals if they should cut the beanstalk down. The man says that the stalk is a means to get up, but one to get down as well. They speculate on what might come down from there. Back at Gantua, Roderick orders one of the giants to wait for the rest at the edge. Jack sanitizes Isabel's wound, while Elmont laments over the death of his friend. She feels guilty for running away and causing this to happen. Jack tells her that on the other hand, if she didn't, Roderick would have taken over the kingdom with no warning. He tells her that they need to get her back so that when she becomes the queen, she could make the world a better place. Her bleeding stops and Elmont asks where they should go. They follow the river to the edge, where they find the giant sleeping. Jack thinks that they should wake him up with the help of a beehive. The two men approach the sleeping giant and place the hive in his mast, then run back to hide. They wait for a moment, then the giant wakes, stumbles over himself, and then falls over the cliff. 
Isabel and Jack hug, but Elmont disapproves. As they walk toward the edge, Elmont tells them that he needs to stay behind and take care of Roderick. He tells Jack to bring the princess home and makes him a guardian. Isabel says goodbye to him and the two leave. At the foot of the stalk, the giant falls down. The king sees him, then orders his general to cut the beanstalk down for the sake of the kingdom. The general is reluctant because the princess still hasn't arrived, so the king takes his sword and goes over to cut it, asking his daughter for forgiveness. When he sees the king's resolve, the general orders his men to cut the stalk. Simultaneously, Jack and Isabel climb down the stalk and see their city at its foot. They kiss, then wonder what the people down the stalk are doing. The operation to cut down the beanstalk is seriously underway. Meanwhile, at Gantua, Elmont waits for Roderick at the edge. He's woken up by the approaching giant army. Roderick arrives and goes over to the edge when suddenly Elmont attacks him and he drops the rest of the beans. They fall inside the entrance cave and struggle. Roderick asks for the giants to help so General Fallon tells his men to dig him out. Roderick and Elmont fight and Roderick has the upper hand when Elmont manages to grab his sword and wound him. But, Roderick pushes him almost off the edge again and Elmont grabs his knife and stabs him. The giants dig a hole through the stone but don't manage to get to Roderick in time before he dies. What they do manage to do is take the crown. General Fallon puts it on as a ring and becomes the king of the giants. Back at the foot of the stalk, the men have succeeded in cutting one part of it. When it begins to shake and tear apart, Isabel and Jack can feel it higher up. The sheer mass of the stalk begins to come down on the men in its foot. Jack tells Isabel to hang on. Elmont jumps on the top of the stalk before it collapses completely and General Fallon watches it go. Jack and Isabel ride the stalk and he uses one of its stems as a rope to swing away from it. The rest of the stalk that Elmont is riding, gets almost to the palace and destroys a part of it, but not before he can jump off as well. The king feels horrible because he thinks that he has lost his daughter. Suddenly, his general approaches and brings her to him. Isabel tells him about Roderick and he says he's sorry. Jack leaves and when Isabel asks about him, the king goes after him. He rewards Jack, saying that as a father he can't reward him enough. Isabel comes out wearing armor and as they say goodbye he gives her the book to remember him. She rides with her father to the palace. Simultaneously, General Fallon finds the rest of the magic beans. He throws them in the water and they instantly sprout. General Fallon gets his men prepared as the beans begin to grow on the very edge of their land. The giants begin to climb and push the stalks down even before they are fully formed. General Fallon jumps on as well. On earth, Jack finds his horse and sees the giants coming down, then rides to inform the king. Moments later, the giants arrive. Jack tells a monk to ring the alarm and as he approaches the king and Isabel, telling them about the giants, they see the giants behind him. Everyone hurries back toward the city, with the giants catching up and killing the king's men. General Fallon goes after the king, but they are slowed down by the first beanstalk. Elmont gets the army in the city ready, from the archers to the hot oil. The giants are right on Jack's tail, as Elmont waits for them to arrive in the city to light up the oil. The king enters the city and he rises the drawbridge before Jack gets on it. He jumps on, but so does General Fallon. Elmont pushes him off the bridge and he burns in the oil. The other giants prepare to get into the city, but Fallon survives under the water. Elmont reunites with Jack and Isabel. He tells the king that the giants have the crown and they suddenly throw a bell into the city, then latch onto the drawbridge with hooks. The king tells Isabel to go to his chambers and light a beacon to warn the other kingdoms. He tells Jack to look after her. Elmont and the rest manage to hold the drawbridge. Isabel leads Jack through a shortcut via the royal catacombs and they pass King Eric's grave. They get to the royal chamber when they hear something under the floor. General Fallon pushes through it and they run. The army keeps trying to hold the giants off, but they just keep decimating their ranks. They throw in flame threes into the city. The humans fire at the giants with spears and finally make some progress in the fight, but the giants just fight back and destroy their weapons. Fallon can smell the princess, as she and Jack hide in the king's robe. He finds them and they run away going up a tight staircase. Fallon breaks through a wall to get to them and grabs Isabel, then grabs Jack as well when he tries to kill him. As the giant is about to swallow Jack whole, he takes out the remaining magic bean and throws it in his mouth. The bean begins to sprout in his stomach and comes out of him, killing him and destroying the palace. As pieces of the giant fall around Jack and Isabel, his hand with the crown falls next to Jack. Meanwhile, the rest of the giants pull the drawbridge back down, so the humans shut the doors to the city. The men get ready for the arrival of the giants and wait as they break through. Suddenly, they see the beanstalk taking apart the palace and the giants drop their weapons, then kneel in front of the human army. Jack appears wearing the crown and Isabel takes his hand. Much later, Jack is reading the ending of the story to his children, where the giants were made to get back on their land and the princess wed her farm boy prince. The kids ask about the crown, worried that the giants will come back, but he tells them that it's in a safe place as Isabel joins them. Jack tells them the story of the giants again, as the reconstruction of the crown is seen, becoming what the imperial state crown looks like today. The crown is seen in the present day, as a guide tells some students about it. The safe place in which it is held is in Westminster Abbey in London.
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.